good morning everyone um thank you for giving me this opportunity i am dr vijayanti kadambi post graduate resident uh, and my guide is dr sonia sandeep associate professor from the department of radio diagnosis abvims and dr rml hospital new delhi and my topic is mdct imaging of vocal cord palsy Vocal cord paralysis brought on by recurrent laryngeal nerve dysfunction may signal the presence of mediastinal illness including a variety of neoplastic inflammatory and vascular disorders patients with vocal cord paralysis usually present with hoarseness of voice utilizing routine ct of the neck the radiologist can confidently suggest the existence of vocal cord paralysis even in the absence of history of hoarseness slow growing tumors that infiltrate or surround the recurrent laryngeal nerve may produce ct abnormalities even before clinical paralysis is recognized the larynx hypopharynx entire uh, recurrent laryngeal nerve should be carefully examined once uh, vocal cord palsy is discovered clinically or on a ct scan The recurrent laryngeal nerve, a branch of the vagus nerve, supplies the intrinsic muscles of the larynx, except the cricothyroid, which is supplied by the superior laryngeal nerve. These intrinsic muscles control vocal cord motion, and palsy can be caused by a lesion anywhere from the vagus vagus nerve's brainstem nuclei to the point where the recurrent laryngeal nerve enters the larynx. The vocal cords are situated in the glottis. and the glottis includes true vocal cords anterior and the posterior commissure peripheral vocal cord paralysis is more common than central with only 10% of them being central the vocal cords are in a relaxed abducted position during silent respiration whereas breath holding calls causes the cords to come in a midline abducted position vagal nuclei are situated within the medulla and any lesion in this region can cause vocal cord palsy bilateral vocal cord palsy in children is a strong indicator of central disease when we come to the imaging it can be divided into intracranial and extracranial parts intracranial includes the brain stem and the skull base here bilateral vocal cord palsy is common and usually the symptoms uh, onset of symptoms is acute the area of the medullary nuclei of the vagal nerve can be best evaluated with mri using t2 dwa and t1 contrast and non contrast enhanced imaging demyelinations infarctions tumors can involve the medulla and at the sternal portion the vagal nerve can be affected by external compression by uh, various extraaxial masses vascular structures or by nerve pathologies like schwannoma paraganglioma or neuritis if multiple cranial nerves are involved we should think of any pathology in the jugular foramen and when we come to the extra cranial vagal and recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy this is best evaluated by multi detector ct with contrast enhancement extra cranial vagal or rln palsy are seen usually in lung cancer with mediastinal lymph node metastasis and squamous cell carcinoma of the neck with or without local nodes mets other pathologies like infections benign masses or malignancies can also cause uh, vocal cord palsy aim of our study was to detect and characterize vocal cord paralysis with multi detector computer computed tomography materials and methods a venue of the study was a department of radio diagnosis at abbims and dr rml hospital delhi it was a cross sectional observational study done from july 2021 to september 2022 the sample size was 12 and it was done using a siemens somatome definition flash 128 slice um, dual source ct scanners and it was performed in supine position at the end of full inspiration uh then a thin axial sections were taken from the uh, base of skull to upper abdomen in plain and post contrast phases it was done in all patients suspected to have vocal cord paralysis on basis of clinical complaints of hoarseness of voice and laryngoscopy reports and the scans were analyzed to identify vocal cord paralysis and to look for the exact cause and localize the site of involvement it when vcp was uh, suspected or confirmed clinically quiet respiration was used for ct assessment of the larynx since it brings the vocal cords to an intermediate position of uh, and our results and discussion uh, of the 12 total patients no patient had bilateral vocal cord paralysis five of them had a right uh, cord paralysis and seven patients had a left vocal cord paralysis 
Um, the clinical side of the paralysis was correctly diagnosed on imaging in all the 12 patients with unilateral disease. Among the 12 patients, 6 patients had palsy due to a neoplasm, 5 patients due to infective causes and 1 patient was due to trauma. Of the neoplasms, 3 patients had lung malignancy, 2 patients had esophageal malignancy and 1 had hypopharyngeal malignancy and among infective causes, 4 of them had left-sided palsy and uh, due to involvement of the AP window nodes while 1 patient had right vocal cord palsy. One patient also had a post-traumatic he left hemiparesis with a uh, resultant right vocal cord palsy. Among the three patients with lung malignancy, one patient had a perihilar mass with mediastinal in involvement and left vocal cord palsy. And two patients had a right upper lung mass with right vocal cord palsy. Among two patients with esophageal malignancy, one patient had a left palsy and other patient had a right palsy. Brief anatomy um, of the uh, vagal and the recurrent laryngeal nerves. So the vagal nuclei arise, uh, are present in the medulla which travel to the premedullary cisterns, reach the jugular foramen and exit into the carotid sheath. The right recurrent laryngeal nerve leaves the vagus nerve anteriorly uh, to the subclavian artery and runs posteriorly under the artery at the brachiocephalic bifurcation. It has a short mediastinal course running obliquely over the surface of the apical parietal pleura towards the right tracheoesophageal groove. While the left vagus, the, the vagus nerve descends into the uh, mediastinum in the carotid artery sheath on the left side before descending anterolaterally to the thoracic iota. The left lyricant laryngeal nerve emerges from the uh, vagus nerve at the level of the aortic arch and runs posteromedially beneath it passing through the AP window posterior to the ligamentum arteriosum. To reach the tracheoesophageal groove, it then ascends vertically through the superior mediastinum. Since the left recurrent laryngeal nerve is longer than the right, left, is more, uh, left palsy is more commonly encountered. Signs of vocal cord palsy can be divided into three. Indirect signs, the paralyzed cord and supporting features. Indirect signs like enlarged la laryngeal ventricle, aryepiglottic fold, medial deviation and thickening, dilatation of the piliform sinus, medial deviation of the arytenoid cartilage, wide vallecula and the cord itself like pointing of the atrophied cord, subglottic fullness, paramedian position of the true cord. And supporting features can be posterior cricoarytenoid muscle atrophy, paralytic curve of the subglottic arch. Uh, some representative images of our cases. There is a coronal reformatted CT image which shows loss of the subglottic arch, ipsilateral laryngeal ventricle and pyriform sinus enlargement and pointing and an atrophied ipsilateral vocal cord. Um, the image on the right side shows a left uh, RLN palsy where um, there is distension of the ipsilateral pyriform fossa and a medially rotated thickened ipsilateral aryepiglottic fold. Another axial CT where there is enlargement of the ipsilateral pyriform sinus. And, uh, on a, uh, and on the right, there is uh, the mushroom-like appearance of the, um, uh, ip, uh, of the airway due to combination of, uh, you know, ip ipsilateral laryngeal ventricle dilatation and posterior cord medialization. Uh, uh, the axial contrast and city shows ill-defined heterogeneously enhancing soft tissue mass with its epicenter in the left hilar region extending to involve the AP window leading to a left re recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy in this patient. Axial contrast enhanced CT shows a heterogeneously enhancing soft tissue thickening of the thoracic esophagus to involve the tracheoesophageal groove leading to a right recurrent laryngeal palsy. My conclusion is vocal cord paralysis can be caused by a variety of common and uncommon mediastinal disease entities and it can also be the only presenting symptom of a clinically occult disease or malignancy. Fast speed, high spatial resolution and volumetric imaging with MPR makes uh, CT the technique of choice for non-invasive confirmation and localization of the cause of vocal cord paralysis. These are my references. Thank you.